Have you ever wondered how to build a custom serpentine setup for an old muscle car? Well, I'm going to show you how right now. So here's one of the things I'm going to have to do. I have to come up with a way to do a belt tensioner. So here's my crank pulley. And right above that is the electric water pump. Over here is my supercharger pulley. And I need lots of really good tension on that. And it's kind of far away, at least 16 to 20 inches. If you have a long stretch of belt, that is going to sit there and flop in the wind. And I have another video, I'll link to that about where I was talking about this before. If, if this pulley is too far up, then the path from this tangential point to that tangential point might run into the housing of the electric water pump. Over here, it's much more complicated because I've got the alternator pulley, and then I've got the power steering pulley, which is somewhere in this area. And then I've got basically two independent circuits on this uh, main crank pulley where I gotta come up with like spacing in this direction. But as long as I have these all in an orientation where they're not like interfering with suspension components or wheel wells, now we can work with spacing them out. This power steering pump needs to have enough wrap on it. So I need to wrap it around a little bit more, give it a little bit more traction, a little bit more surface area of the belt to make sure I'm really rotating and spinning that pump. The belt's gonna come like this. I'm gonna put a pulley probably here. And this will be an idler, but it might also be a tensioner. It'll go there and then it'll wrap, and it'll come over here, and this'll wrap. But I'm gonna need another one over here somewhere to keep the belt from running into that housing. Over here, I've actually already designed one generation of the supercharger pulley. So here's the uh, layout right now. I've got the supercharger over here. I have a whole series of videos on how I made that. Actually, I'm going to have to raise this. This will go up about three inches. This is, from, this is mounted and ready to go. I need to tighten this up get that finally set and then uh, i'm going to mount two things i'm going to mount a power steering pump here i'm going to mount an alternator here there'll be two separate circuits so this circuit will be power steering and alternator and this circuit will be supercharger so here's the power steering pump this is a turn one so i've got a ton of these 3 8 16 bolts of various types and sizes and i have a lot in stainless because i've been using them to assemble the, the engine these aren't going to be the ones that permanently go on the car, but I'm going to use them for mock-up. The way I did it last time, maybe there's a better way to do it, I'm not sure, is I laid this down in the Shapoko and I zeroed it and I tried to make it self-center on the holes. And so I, I circled where the holes needed to be and I measured this one and I measured this one and I wrote down the X and Y coordinates for every single hole. And then I translated those at that time to carbide create. So I'm gonna throw some nuts on here and then we'll see how she fits. This power steering pump. So this can be like probably here, maybe a little higher. Appears to be working. Yeah. Look at that. Yep. We're gonna have some. Yikes. Theoretically, this would work. to put it in utilities yet because yeah yeah i know okay Okay, <laughs> it's not perfect, but I think I need to move this one up just a dent and just a little. I have to shave that off, but this is now up about three inches, two and a half inches or three inches. 
It's like the wheel well that comes down right, right here. So if I put a tube here, I got the suspension travel to worry about. So I still might have to either clock this, like maybe a little bit that way, or lift it another inch. This guy actually needs to be right up against the block. Here in this bracket right there, these actually need to be threaded. Because I'm not going to have any room to put a bolt on the back. If I'm going to make them threaded, this should probably not be aluminum. And maybe this should be steel. Just because you can strip threads in the aluminum. I probably have to maybe not use this pin. Something like that. And the pulley could probably be here instead. And then this is too wide. This is fine, but it's kind of fat, you know? Like, I don't need all this material out here. Well, actually I do. I do because we've got the, these recesses for putting fittings in. So I do need all that fatness. This is why prototypes are handy. So this is, these two comprise the driver's side. This is the power steering pump bracket. This is the alternator bracket. When I'm done machining these with the Shapoko, I'll put them in my router and I'll do a, a chamfer like this. I need to cut sort of into this. You know, I need to make an organic kind of swoop through here. And that means I might lose this whole bunch of little notes. So these need to be moved over just a tiny bit, maybe a tenth of an inch. I think where the pulleys are is just about perfect. Like I think that'll work. So I don't know how many versions of these I've been through, maybe three, four. The, one of the hard things on the alternator is just getting this groove right. I finally have these really well lined up. This pocket that's, that's machined in here is just about perfect, but there's going to be A and fittings here. And so they have to sit in these little pockets that I machined out. It does interfere down here just a tiny bit, but I can get away with it. Just the way that Rotrex designs this. You want the, the pulley to, you know, sit proud of this surface. You can't have the belt running into bolts, so these bolts are in the way, right?
I built this tensioner mechanism. This is just a built by hand wooden prototype, okay? It works kind of like a, sort of like a linear rail with a, like a, a ball screw. So this screw is captured between these two blocks. It makes the linear rail go down. So it pushes the pulley down and it puts tension on the serpentine belt. This idler can be moved here to here. This could actually run this way and this could be a smooth idler rather than a grooved idler. This won't look quite so bulky in the future. Obviously it's made out of wood. That will change. I went through a lot of iterations of the alternator bracket. I can put a lot of tension on this. So where I've got this position now, I have one of these turnbuckle extend this and it'll turn the alternator out, which is going to put a ton of tension on this. And then the idler is here. I ended up tilting the mounting holes for the power string pump just ever so slightly. And actually I tilted them about 10 degrees from what I had. And now it seems to be almost perfectly level, which is great. I don't have a lot of clearance down here between the uh, steering shaft coupler and this pump. And I, I don't know, this is going to be a little tight here for, but I could move this one, this fulcrum here down just maybe half inch. It'll give me a little bit more hood clearance. As it is, I'm pretty close. Let's see here. a bit. I'm gonna have to either cut these screws or get shorter bolts here, but that's threaded.
Okay, this is essentially done for the main brackets. I think I think we're okay. The the remaining items and this this is going to be a lot more detailed, so I'll probably just do this on an extra video. But I need to make the spacers that that appropriately put these things out from the block on the, they need to. What am I trying to say? I need to make the spacers that space this off the block the appropriate dimension so that it lines up with the crank pulley and the crank pulley is not fully mounted it's just kind of finger tight so I need to take the whole engine out and I need to have it out of the car hang it tighten up the crank pulley the balancer get all that fully permanently mounted and then then start working through space and everything off and the other items which are going to require a little bit more detail is the tensioner that will be here that'll push this down like this to make that belt tight and the idler pulley here that standoff needs to be machined i think i'm going to wrap this video that's how you make a whole custom aluminum accessory drive set for a small block chevy this is the second time i've done this and I'm sure there's more I could change, but this is going to stay the way it is for now. This is Davian Hill with Solve Fix Build. Thanks for watching. Hey, you're awesome. You really hung in there, didn't you? If you want to see the next project, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notifications button. Hey, if you want to see any other types of projects, say so in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you want to support the channel, it's super easy and it's free. Just hit that like button. The YouTube algorithm likes that. Thanks for watching. Stay rad and go start your next project.